What's up, everybody, and welcome back to another live stream from the Scalar Learning Channel. And today we are back at it with this SAT Khan Academy series for the digital SAT covering everything related to the math covered on this test. This is really critical, especially if you're taking this March digital SAT, the first go around, the first debut, if you will. So we're going to jump through scatter plots now. We're doing all the topics, all 37, taking these questions, solving these questions for the first time. Uh, and you're going to learn along with me. And I do believe these problem walkthroughs are the most effective way to prepare. All right, here we go. Camille's math test include a survey question asking how many hours students spent studying for the test. The scatter plot and trend lines show the relationship between how many hours students spent studying and the score on the test. Assuming the line correctly shows the trend, what does it mean that the line's y-intercept is 37? So y-intercept occurs when the x value is zero, meaning study time is zero, meaning with no study time, you should be getting a 37. That would be the projected model. So the, that, that studied the least, not necessarily the least, who didn't study at all. The model indicates that the student who didn't study at all will have an average score of approximately 37 points. Yeah, this is, this. is it doesn't say at least, and it's not about the person who studies the least, it's literally zero. That's the, you know, why uh, it, 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 it's when study time goes to zero. So D would be the winner. These are a little tricky because the wording's a little crazy, but <clears throat> same idea. Scatter plot and trend lines show the relationship between the percentage of American adults who smoke in New York since 1945. Uh, and then it says, what does it mean that the line's y-intercept is 41? Same type of question, right? So in years since 1945, that'd be zero years from 1945, aka in 1945, we would predict that 41, what is this percent? Yeah, 41% smoked in 1945. Uh, let's see, the model indicates that approximately 41%, not 1985, 1945, boom, that's it. Just straight up reading the table, boom, done. Okay, now we're talking about a line of best fit. I'm kind of skipping through this, but we should read the whole thing, obviously. She can read foot lengths to shoulder height, but what is it talking about? It's talking about the lines, uh, the, the slope. Um, Uh-oh, we're having a little problem loading this, but... We can probably deduce this regardless. Um, if we see here that it's it's not showing it, but we know that its height is the y-axis and length is the x-axis, this might be enough because what does the line so okay? So it means so in general slope is 5.89 height. So the average shoulder height would be it's it's a change of 5.89 in height versus one change in length. Um, let's see, on average, each one centimeter increase in length was associated with a 5.8. Yeah, it's C. Um, even though I don't see the graph, I don't need the graph. You know, it's a, that's what slope always is, is ch change of Y over change of X. One centimeter increase in shoulder. Yeah, this is backwards, so it should be C. All right. Yay, it's correct. Okay. So we made it around that little glitch here in uh, Khan Academy. It's all good. All right, now we got the diagram. We're good to go. Scatter plot and trend line show the average income, blah, blah, blah. Uh, what does the line slope of 0 0.031 mean? Again, we're going to go back to 0 0.031 dollars, right, in terms of rent per, what would the slope be? Average income per income increase of $1. Right, because this is in this is in dollars. I assume ten thousand. It doesn't say, but I'm sure ten thousand, twenty thousand, thirty thousand. So for one dollar. So let's see if this is correct. Right, the so basically it's going up three cents. So your rent is going up three cents for every extra dollar you make. Okay, average house. Nope. The average rent. Nope. Average with each increase. Look, just just what we said. One increase in average income. Thirty one three cents increase in average rent, and this is backwards. So again, it's always change of Y per change of X1, if that makes sense. Let's see if it's right. Boom, we got them. Okay, I'd say that was a pretty that was a pretty tricky one, even considering that it's foundations, just because the language is confusing. So you want to get practice with these, and then we're going to go through the medium and the advanced levels, and we will flesh it out more. So anyways, make sure to join us on this series. We're leading up and doing as many videos as possible for this March SA, digital SAT debut. We're all very excited about it. I'm signed up to take that test, so that's pretty cool. And if you did like this video, make sure to click that like button. And if you want to see more from the Scale of Learning channel, make sure to click subscribe. And if you want access to the best SAT prep digital SAT resource out there, it is the SAT Crash Course. 
The link is in the description. Use the code SCALAR for 20% off and you're good to go. That is it, ladies and gentlemen. Keep on joining us for this series. Thank you guys so much for joining and I will see you in the next video. Take it easy.